Joining us now is ESPN college football insider and expert Trevor Maddich. Maddich Monday. After another BYU victory, the Cougars still number 19 in the country. They're three and one and have a date with Utah State on Thursday. Trevor, welcome to the show. How was your weekend? It was a relief, wasn't it? Wow, the way that Wyoming game started and then finally, okay, grind it out. I, I, I was worried that my weekend was going to end up being <laughs> incredibly emotionally draining in the most negative ways. But then BYU pulled it out, man, so it was a great weekend. How would you assess BYU's overall performance against the Cowboys in that 38-24 win? Overall, you've got to give them a lot of credit. They played a sloppy game. They made uh, plenty of mistakes. But they played against a Wyoming team that came out on fire with the kind of team that would give BYU trouble right now, especially coming off of the Baylor and Oregon weeks back to back. And BYU took their best punch and then they started to gather themselves and then they started to punch back. And you don't always get to, to play the game you want. Sometimes you have to play the game you're in. And that game was, it was a dirty, ugly fight. And fortunately, BYU rose up and they won the fight yet again. We were just talking about in what's trending. Who or what was the most sustainable thing uh, in BYU versus Wyoming? Because some of those things feel like they might be singular. You hope Miles Davis can keep that going. But he came into the game as the number three running back. He walks out as the number one running back going into Thursday, perhaps. And with Keanu Hill, he showed up in a big way when BYU's top three receivers weren't in the game. So what do you feel like was the most sustainable thing from that game? Well, you start with Jared Hall. He has been just magnificent in terms of incredible consistency over the course of whatever kind of game they happen to be in. Uh, you know, whether they're playing Baylor, Oregon, this one against Wyoming, he is just amazingly steady at such a high level. And I, that, that to me is, is very repeatable because he's shown it's repeatable. He just does it all the time. He is averaging over 70% of his completion, uh, pass completions. And against Oregon, he was 70% past completions as well. And that was in a loss. And I don't like to talk a lot about stats, but one of the most important ones for quarterbacks is not passer rating. It's QBR, quarterback rating, which takes into account not just your passing, but also your running turnovers and when you do certain things. In other words, if you throw the ball for an eight-yard completion, your passer rating goes up. But if it's third and nine, your QBR will go down. So it's a better indication of how well you're doing. And in that Oregon loss, Jared Hall's passer rating, or excuse me, QBR, overall quarterback rating, was 74 out of 100. 100's perfect, 50's average. He was 74 in the loss. So that, that steadiness of him was, I think, the thing that is the most uh, repeatable, and that's critical because the most important position is the one that's giving them the most consistency right now, and he has he carried them through some very difficult times. College football insider Trevor Maddich is on BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, Jaron Hall has been Mr. Consistency with those nine touchdowns, only one giveaway overall, and that happened in game number one in a blowout for BYU. A lot of people feel like because Jaron Hall is the quarterback, BYU is going to be in every game. But, Trevor, what else has to happen to join Jaron Hall's excellence for BYU to not just beat Utah State but really compete and beat the likes of Notre Dame and Arkansas? Well, the defense has to be healthy, and the rotation has to be effective, especially up front. This is something we've talked about from the beginning of the season, that BYU's defensive line is quite good when they're all there and they're rotating through and staying fresh. But they, they don't have a lot of guys on that defensive line that are dynamic disruptors, that are dynamic pass rushers. And so the, the guys like Tyler Batty, the guys uh, that can actually make plays individually without blitzes and without stunts and things like that those guys are continuing to be a work in progress from a depth standpoint and i think once byu gets to the point to where they've got more guys on the defensive front that are making plays in the backfield individually that's when this team as a whole will jump up to the next level does it matter who's carrying the ball for byu and when you're on a team like that because certainly i could see the argument for both because Miles Davis is like, okay, do, we don't know if we can rely on Miles Davis. Granted, he's only really been given one game where we can see something, and he certainly showed up. But you just wonder when you go up against Notre Dame and Arkansas, like, okay, that's a different level where you need consistency, and BYU is looking for it at that running back position. Does it matter who's carrying the ball for BYU right now? 
Uh, it does. I think you need somebody that can make something happen on their own because you've got a very good offensive line at BYU, and they're being maligned right now, I think in many ways unfairly. This offensive line is very good. What Miles Davis showed against Wyoming was the ability to make a play when something wasn't there. I mean, you look at that 70-yard run that he had uh, to the left. It was a massive hole. The blocking was fantastic, not just the O-line, but the receivers as well. And he burst through it and off he went. And what was impressive there was that when he puts his foot in the ground to cut, he doesn't delay. He doesn't, like, have a little lag before he gets going. He puts his foot in the ground and, bam, he's gone full speed straight up the field. And that's one of the reasons he's able to burst through holes that open and close very quickly. That one was open. It stayed open. But that's not my favorite thing about his, his performance against Wyoming. It was a pitch to the right. And the game was, I don't know, about 10 yards or so. It wasn't a huge game. But when that ball was pitched to him in the backfield out wide, there were two defenders on the line of scrimmage right in front of him. Two. And I'm thinking, okay, kid, now what do you got? Right? Well, what he did was put that foot in the ground and then cut slightly inside the inside of those defenders. It wasn't a massive cutback. It was just a little bit. But he did it so fast. And the angle he chose was so perfect that he ran by both of those unblocked defenders standing right in front of it. That, to me, is something that you can't teach. It's just You just have to have it. Is it repeatable? I hope so. Certainly, we, we are seeing that, and we see great promise. Uh, and I, I think that he's got a chance to, to do some things that um, not a lot of, of running backs can really do. I just don't mean at BYU. I mean really anywhere. If he can continue to beat guys at the point of attack that aren't blocked, because then you combine that with a, with a very good offensive line, and all of a sudden your running game gets more dynamic. Trevor, we've talked already about BYU's defense needing to get healthy, and by the time Saturday night wrapped up, it was almost comical how long the injury list was for BYU, and now the offense is starting to feel it, certainly in the wide receiver room with Puka Nakua going down again, an undisclosed injury there. Chase Roberts was out with some nicks and bruises. Uh, rumor has it it's a hip flexor. Uh, and then you got Gunnar Romney, who hasn't played all season. Hey, Kingsley Suamataia gets a little bit banged up. How concerned are you about BYU's health and status just with depth at this point of the season? It's a big deal. They can't just have one guy going deep. I mean, Keanu Hill who seemed to be that guy against Wyoming for the most part, and he was fantastic. But... You can't just have one guy because defenses can roll to that one guy, take him away, and then all of a sudden attack the line of scrimmage in ways that they wouldn't be able to if you've got multiple guys that can get deep. Taking the top off a of defense is a real thing, and you need more than one guy that can do it. But there is help on the way. Did somebody uh, mention Miles Davis? Uh, yeah. Miles Davis came in to this program as a wide receiver, shifted over to running back. Still has the speed of a wide receiver, but now he's got the moves and the strength of a running back. He's built his strength. Why couldn't they put two running backs in the backfield and then once in a while take Davis and split him out wide, put him in motion, run him as a wide receiver, or have him with two backs in the backfield and have one be a lead blocker? The thing that this does is create matchup nightmares for defenses because uh, if you have a guy that's big enough like a linebacker to be able to to stop the run inside if they hand it off in there, that guy's not going to be able to go out and cover Miles Davis in space when he goes out and performs a wide receiver role. You just It's a nightmare problem. A guy small enough and fast enough to cover him as a wide receiver is going to get run over at the point of attack if you hand the ball off. So these are things that Coach Roderick has the opportunity to really demonstrate some creativity. And I haven't talked to them yet, so I don't want anybody to think that that I'm spilling the beans here. This is just what I think. But I think with, with receivers going down and issues with depth there, all of a sudden you've got a wide receiver playing running back for you who just showed that with the ball in his hands, he's really good. Now, he's got a lot to learn in a lot of ways. I think, you know, pretty much everybody does. But you can game plan for him things that he can do, that he can learn and do well and do fast. And I want to see that against Utah State. Is Miles Davis Cordero Patterson of the Atlanta Falcons? Is that what we're getting at, Trevor? Well, he's got a chance to be. You know, we've got to be careful of, you know, <laughs> crowning him the, the Heisman Trophy winner. Well, I mean, one game. You know, certainly. you see all the time. One game. That happened to Florida's quarterback, Anthony Richardson, against Utah, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, he he went out there, and everybody said, oh, this is the Heisman winner. This guy's fantastic. And he has regressed to the mean since then. And he looks so good against Utah because Utah's a great team. But 
it was more bad defense than good offense when it came to that because at times they lost their mind and got out of their gaps. And so you'd have two or three defenders in one gap and nobody in the adjacent gap. And that's where the quarterback went, Anthony Richardson of Florida. So um, it was a little bit too soon to say that he was going to be this massive Heisman usurper. And so we want to be a little bit careful about what we expect from Miles Davis going forward, not put too much pressure on him, but he's got potential to continue to grow into a role of playmaker with tremendous versatility. The question is how much can he assimilate mentally and then apply to the field what he learned in the in practice and in the meeting room in a way that's consistent for Jaron Hall because Jaron can't afford to stand back there and wait and see if Miles went to the right spot. Right. Miles needs to go to the right spot. And so that's what he needs to demonstrate. Miles busy playing the trumpet, scoring, uh, you know, running down the field for BYU. He's a busy guy. Okay, so Utah State comes in. Hey, Certainly hey, BYU. Hey, my, my, Miles can play the trumpet without even without even touching the the mouthpiece. He can put it way out here and play that thing just it's as well. It's as an unbelievable things. feat, unknown to the man prior to this about. century. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Utah State comes in having lost to Weber State and UNLV at home. Certainly BYU should dial it in, focus, beat that team. But the build to this point has been for Notre Dame and now Arkansas. How are you feeling about BYU's chances against those two, given how banged up the Cougars are? They are hoping Chase Roberts and Gunnar Romney can come back for those games. We'll see about Pukunakua. Well, they, they are banged up, and that's a real problem because those are two very physical teams. And Notre Dame, their demise was reported prematurely also. They just went out and smacked North Carolina in the mouth. And you would expect their offense to do well against that North Carolina defense that's been struggling. This is Notre Dame now. But the Notre Dame offense, which has been struggling and is working on their backup quarterback, um, you know, did what they needed to do. The Notre Dame defense went against one of the best offenses in the country and shut them down. North Carolina's quarterback, uh, Drake May, was a five-star recruit that was committed to Alabama who then decided to stay home at Carolina because he's a North Carolina kid. And so this guy is, is as talented as any quarterback in the country. And Notre Dame shut them down. And so it's a, it's a physical Irish team. And then, of course, we know what Arkansas can do. And so in some ways, this, this Saturday night, the Thursday game for BYU is very tricky because it's a rivalry game. And Utah State is capable. They've been struggling. But if uh, their quarterback, Bonner, cuts down on the uh, interception. I think he has, what, eight interceptions in the last two weeks, both mm. games' losses. If he can cut those down, then all of a sudden their passing attack uh, could be a threat, especially if he's got time in the pocket. And he has had time in the pocket. He just keeps throwing it to the other team. And so they are a threat. If BYU can get past them on Thursday, then that short week becomes a benefit because now they've got a long week heading into uh, Las Vegas and Notre Dame, and they'll have a chance to maybe get a little bit more healthy. But it's important for fans to understand that it's just like Wyoming last week, they gave, gave us a scare in the first half, didn't they? But Utah State has the ability to do some things that could make this a long day for BYU. And so they need to focus on this game. But if they do, and if they win, then they've got a long week that they can actually recuperate. This is a lot of injuries in September for the Cougars. ESPN's Trevor Maddich sounding his own trumpet like a champion. Trevor, great to talk with you again. Thanks. Thanks, guys.